Most of the patients we see will have a cough or pain or decreased exercise and they'll be treated uh, by their physicians for potentially a common cold or, or receive a chest x-ray with a trial of therapy. And then once a first or second line of routine therapy is attempted, such as antibiotics, they, and they don't improve, that usually triggers more extensive testing. Mesothelioma overall is a rare disease. Given that it's a rare disease, most patients are diagnosed or initially seen by physicians with a relatively low experience with the disease. So once the disease is identified and potentially diagnosed, usually the physicians and or the patients look for certain centers or physicians who commonly take care of the disease. And so most of the patients with a suspicion of mesothelioma are referred to one of a handful of centers around the country, such as Baylor College of Medicine, who routinely manage these patients. Treating patients with mesothelioma has multiple parts. When they first see us, importantly, we do a thorough assessment of both the patient as well as the spread of the disease in order to see what they can tolerate and what is most appropriate for them. I like to think of the patient's treatment as a strategy rather than an operation. And with multimodality therapy, we tend to give them chemotherapy, potentially radiotherapy with surgery. And those three aspects are what's most commonly thought of as multimodality therapy. In order to decide what's most appropriate and what, how we can best treat this patient, we have to go through a relatively complicated staging procedures and evaluation that includes the scan, CT scans, PET scans, and potentially biopsies or examining other cavities to see whether or not this disease is spread. By the time the day of surgery comes around, the patient has already had all the necessary imaging, biopsies, as well as preoperative workup. They'll come in the morning of surgery and we'll ask them not to eat or drink that day. In addition, they may take some of their home medications, but we'll be very clear on which ones to take and which ones not to take. The patients will come to pre-op holding, check in, they'll be, uh, undergo the routine check to make sure it's the right patient, the right side, the right procedure, in which I'll personally double check that morning. Once this is done, the patient's brought to the operating room. In the operating room, the patients undergo general anesthesia, and then we perform whichever operation was planned, which is typically the pleurectomy decord or the extrapleural pleural pneumonectomy.